One way to measure demand in real estate is to track what we call the immediate sales. These are the homes that get listed and take offers immediately, often within hours or maybe a day before they go into contract. They spend essentially no time on the active market. And during the pandemic frenzy, as uh, nearly a third of all new listings were in contract essentially immediately after listing. At last year at this time, the number of immediate sales was plummeting each week. But on the supply side, even as the market cooled last year, the new listing volume was actually pretty slim. The uh, supply was still constrained with barely 100,000 single-family homes uh, hitting the market in a given week. It's this supply-demand dynamic that we're seeing play out in 2023. Very few sellers so that enough buyers are available. And despite mortgage payments being much higher, home prices actually don't correct down. Every week, of course, Altos Research tracks every home for sale in the country. We analyze all the pricing, all the supply and demand, and all the changes in that data, and we make it available to you before you see it in the traditional channels. I'm Mike Simonson. I'm the founder of Altos Research, and let's look at the data for mid-May 2023. There are just 420,000 single-family homes on the market in the U.S. this week. That's basically unchanged from last week. It's up a few hundred homes. The, the fact that inventory still isn't climbing measurably by mid-May is really notable. Last year, inventory was climbing 4, 5, 6% per week. Uh, so you can see how, how steep that climb was in, in the light red line for last year. And we've talked about how last year it was an abrupt pullback in buyer demand that allowed inventory to finally build. This year is different. At the time, we assumed that the, the climbing inventory trend would continue into this year. At the new year, our model had predicted that we'd have over 600,000 homes on the market, single-family homes on the market right now. Instead, it's closer to 400,000. It was just way off in, in our expectations. So what happened? Well, for one thing, buyers now seem to be making the calculation that if they can afford their payments now, when they assume rates go down in the future, their homes only get less expensive. And also, since the economy has been throwing recession signals for a year now, uh, we'd factored slowing economy into our forecast. But, but the economy hasn't slowed appreciably yet, and employment is still at record high levels. So we still have home buyers. There are 32% more homes on the market now than last year at this time. Last week, it was 37% more. So the gap from last year is shrinking so rapidly. It looks like we'll be back to negative year-over-year -year inventory changes by the third quarter. Active inventory looks to end 2023 with fewer than 500,000 single-family homes on the market. Shrinking inventory year-over-year is generally correlated with rising prices another year out. So 2024 is actually shaping up to be an up year for home prices at this point. At least that's, that's how the data looks now. A lot of, a lot of external factors can, can hit between now and then, of course, like bank failures and big recessions, wars. Uh, none of those external future possibilities are, are in the data now because, because buyers now act on their situation now. Uh, and that situation is 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 pretty good, good enough for at least the number of sellers. So it's actually interesting. When you look at the data, uh, as I mentioned in the intro, we never really had a lot of sellers, even when inventory was skyrocketing last year. And that's why we call this a supply-constrained market. There were fewer than 100,000 single-family new listings uh, last year this week at this time. Uh, there, that's a, only a 5 million annual pay. So even last year, it was supply constrained. Now, it's even worse. This week, we had only 81,000 new single-family listings, 17% fewer than uh, last year at this time. Uh, 19,000 of those are already in contract. So those are the immediate sales. Uh, the, 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 uh, in this chart, the number of the, 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 each bar, the new listings each week, and the taller the bar, the more 
the more sellers. The light portion of that bar are those immediate sales. So it tells us that there continues to be plenty of demand for the current level of housing supply. In order to tease out the demand trend uh, and how different it is now compared to last May, I took those immediate sales and we can look at them as a percentage of the new listing. So this week, 23% of the new listings went into contract essentially immediately. Uh, that's fewer bidding wars and multiple offer scenarios than during the pandemic, of course. But look at how rapidly this demand indicator was falling last year at this time. Seeing the, the steep decline in the middle of the chart, you can you can also see in this chart how the the demand uh, slowed again last fall when rates did that final jump over seven percent. Buyers stopped. Inventory started rising again late in the year. So now, though, at the right end of this chart, it shows how demand has been staying at this healthy clip. It's not falling. It's not really climbing from here, but it's at a, it's it's already at an elevated level. So if you are looking for signs when a slowing economy, for example, starts to curb this the buyer enthusiasm that we can see this spring, you can confirm or reject that hypothesis right here with the immediate sales rate. And while we're on the, uh, the topic of demand, we can see that the number of homes in contract is st steadily rising, steadily catching up to last year. With 385,000 single family homes in contract, uh, that's up a couple percent from last week. Uh, it's still 16% fewer than last year, 16% fewer homes scheduled to close in the next month or two. But this trend looks to me like by the third quarter, we'll have recovered that gap and we might actually get to more homes in contract again year over year than by the fourth quarter this year. Uh, in this chart, each of the bar here is a total number of single-family homes in contract at, at any given time. The light portion of the bar here are the new pendings that week, 68,000 new pendings this week, which is 10% fewer than last year at this time, uh, which still had the spring, the end of the, the early pandemic, or the, the late pandemic was still uh, getting finished at that point. So we have 16% fewer total now, but only 10% fewer new sales, right? So that gap, each week that gap is getting a little closer. And then after July, the year-over-year -year comparisons start to get really easy. So the, the, the price of the new homes, uh, the, the price of the homes in contract is $384,130. And that's staying one to 2% below last year. These are the homes in contract whose sales will complete in May and June. So since we already know those contract prices are lower than last year, we know that the sales prices will, when they complete, they'll be lower too. Um, but that, that price year over year price decline probably finishes up in the third quarter also. So it's starting to look like we might end up the year flat or maybe even a little up in home prices. Along with the immediate sales, the price reductions are an excellent proxy for housing demand. And we've been talking about how, how quickly price reductions have been falling this year, since the beginning of the year. Price cuts ticked up this week to 29.6%. So it's totally normal for price cuts to be ticking up now uh, in the late spring, early summer, but they're not accelerating. And this shows us yet another steady demand for the homes that are on the market. There are fewer homes with a price cut today than in 2019 at this time. And maybe by July, we'll, have, we'll be tracking fewer than 2018. Last year at this time, price cuts were accelerating by thousands of homes each week. And at that time, those weren't getting offers. And again, this is another signal how different this year is and why we don't have further price pressures to drop from here because we can already see the homes are getting offers at the prices they're at. Uh, let's finish this week with, with home prices. So the median price of single family homes in the U.S. is $449,913. That's basically unchanged from last week. 
uh, when you look at all the homes on the market across the country, asking prices are still a fraction higher than they were last year at this time. Um, I've been I've been trying to consistently illustrate this for folks. Home prices are not falling. Uh, the in the know observers of the housing data, you know, are onto this now, and you'll start to see some some writers talk about this. Even though the headlines uh, will still talk about home price declines for several more months because they're looking at the lagging sales data. The median price of the new listings, that's the light colored line here, is inching up also and is 2% lower than last year at this time. So in most years, uh, the last week of May is the peak of that, that light red line, the, the price of the new listings. After 2019 or in 2019, uh, after uh, the interest rates had been climbing for the previous year, inventory was slightly higher. The uh, the price of the new listings peaked in April of that year because because there was the year over year inventory gains and home prices were were starting to decelerate. So those in 2019 they peaked earlier in the year. Uh, the the best inventory gets listed by May, takes offers in June and July. So if you're listing later in the summer, now you're running into August and school time transitions. So you price a little discount. So the new listings prices peak in May. Um, they and they can stay elevated about that level for all of June. Uh, this is a leading indicator of future sales prices. So. Last year, as demand cooled, we could see the new listings prices start to fall pretty quickly in starting in June. So we're going to keep our eye on this metric next month to see if we retain the price strength um, on the previous year. Or right now, um, you know, the price of the new listings of the homes for sale is just about 2% lower than last year. And we're going to see if that, that starts to compress after June. So I've been talking national. These uh, there are definitely differences in the local markets, and some are not faring as well as the the national trends. If you need to know what's happening in your local market, go to altosresearch.com and just book a free consult with our team. We'll help you interpret this crazy market for your clients right now. It's a critical time to be properly informed about the market. So please join us.